Hello, my name is Dr. Anthony Terrascavage. I'm a clinical psychologist and president of Cleveland Psychological Testing. And in this video, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about uh, ADHD evaluations for adults. You might be asking, uh, why should I get an ADHD evaluation? Do I need an ADHD evaluation? What I could tell you is that typically people get these evaluations because they're falling behind in some way. Most commonly, they're falling behind at work or at school, uh, perhaps in college or in graduate school. Sometimes they have concerns about standardized testing and being able to keep up uh, and finish standardized testing in time because of their cognitive problems, be it something like the ACT or SAT, GRE, MCAT or LSAT, or even you know uh, board examinations, uh, bar examinations, things of that nature. And they want to see if uh, they have an ADHD diagnosis uh, and uh, if they qualify for accommodations uh, that can help them either at school, at work, or in various situations overcome their uh, ADHD problems. Another common reason why people uh, seek out these evaluations is because they're interested in exploring stimulant medications for the treatment of ADHD, such as Vyvanse or Concerta. Uh, these are very effective treatments for ADHD. However, medication providers typically are hesitant to prescribe them unless somebody has an evaluation uh, for ADHD. And, and most commonly it's psychologists like myself or neuropsychologists who are the ones that do those sorts of evaluations. So those are common reasons why someone might want uh, an ADHD evaluation or why it might be beneficial to them. Now, the next question is how should this evaluation be conducted? The most important thing for any ADHD evaluation is that it includes cognitive testing. Uh, the reason for this is by the very nature of the name of the diagnosis, it requires an attention deficit. And that deficit uh, can only be properly assessed by cognitive testing. And the type of cognitive testing that's given is typically an IQ test to measure uh, general intelligence and then also measures of all of the major areas of cognitive function, functioning like memory and language and so on. And then of course, several measures of attention. And uh, as a psychologist, what I'm looking for in that cognitive testing if somebody has ADHD, what will happen is their scores on the attention measures will be substantially worse than their overall intelligence and their other areas of cognitive functioning. In other words, what I'm looking for is a significant deficit uh, in their attentional functioning in order to diagnose ADHD. So that cognitive testing is very important uh, and it's um, something that is all too commonly skipped in evaluations and um, in some cases, if that cognitive testing is skipped, you'll have medication providers who won't prescribe uh, stimulant medications, even with an ADHD diagnosis. You'll have people, uh, you'll have accommodations denied and so on and so forth if that testing isn't um, performed. Another important aspect of any ADHD evaluation is for the mental health professional to get the whole story. Uh, going all the way back to early childhood of how the person's mental health problems and concentration problems have progressed over the course of their lifetime. In other words, uh, we talk about this as psychologists is getting the course of illness, the course of the concentration problems. That's particularly important with uh, ADHD because this is a developmental disorder. And what that means, a developmental disorder begins and occurs early on in someone's life in early childhood. Um, so before the age of seven, for example. So if somebody has no evidence whatsoever of concentration problems prior to say age seven or eight, uh, then by definition, they wouldn't be able to meet criteria for ADHD because it's a developmental disorder. Um, that being said, uh, one thing to note here that's important is that Sometimes people's attention problems or attention deficit doesn't become a problem until later on in their life in adulthood. Uh, this can occur, for example, in people who are relatively bright. 
uh, if, if they're relatively, if you're a relatively intelligent person and you have ADHD, uh, you probably got by just fine early on at school. Your grades are probably just fine because you're intelligent enough where you can make up for the attention problems with sort of raw intelligence and, and do okay. Uh, but as the demands of life increase, as life becomes complex, moving into adulthood, school becomes more challenging, and so on and so forth, sometimes people who are bright and have ADHD, that's when the attention problems start to show up uh, is, uh, as life gets more complex. And so it is possible to only have attention problems that interfere with your life in adulthood and have ADHD, but it's still... Uh, important and necessary to go all the way back to early childhood and get that history uh, because there should be at least some sort of indication of attention problems in childhood if, if in fact, the person has ADHD. The other important aspect of how an ADHD evaluation should be conducted is the evaluator not only has to assess for ADHD but also all other mental disorders because other mental disorders lead to concentration problems. Uh, so, so, for example, two of the most common ones are depression and anxiety. So it's important for me as an evaluator to consider whether or not uh, ADHD is a cause of attention problems, but also consider all these other possibilities like anxiety and like depression. Now, here's why that's important for you uh, as um, the patient. If you're having attention problems, and if those problems are actually due to a mood disorder such as anxiety, the way to treat your attention problems is going to be to treat that mood disorder such as anxiety, for example, with counseling, antidepressant medications, and so on. Um, and if you have ADHD and that's the cause of your attention problems, well, now that's a different set of treatment, and that would include, for example, these stimulant medications like Vyvanse Concerta. Um, the issue is if your attention problems are caused by anxiety, you don't want to take those stimulant medications. First of all, because you're not targeting the root of the problem, which is the anxiety, and, and those are just going to be a sort of band-aid for the concentration problems. And second of all, because stimulants are going to increase anxiety and actually in the long run make the anxiety worse, potentially the concentration problems worse. So it's very important for the evaluator to get this diagnosis right so that you can get the correct treatment that actually fixes your problems, makes you feel better, and improves your attention. So that's how I recommend uh, this testing be done. Now, to talk about our process for these assessments, uh, it, it follows these guidelines and best practices that I just outlined. Um, specifically, uh, before the appointment, you'll be sent a series of questionnaires. It'll take about an hour and a half to complete these questionnaires. You can complete them anywhere you want from the you know, uh, comfort of your home, on a iPad, computer, or phone, anything with an internet connection. And it'll take about an hour and a half to complete these questionnaires. There's a background questionnaire, a personality test, and a test of mental health problems. That all gets completed before our face-to-face -face appointment so that I can review all that information in preparation for our appointment. During our appointment, in the first uh, 15 minutes, that'll be your opportunity to just talk about what you're really hoping to get out of the assessment. What sorts of problems you've been having uh, lately, what sorts of difficulties you're having, and um, you know your major issues and how it's affecting your life. I'll also give you the opportunity to give me three questions that you want answered about yourself. Uh, and these questions could relate in any way you want to your mental health, your personality, your attention, cognitive functioning. Whatever questions have been on your mind about why you do certain things, why certain things are happening, you can throw those questions out there in the beginning. We'll talk about them, and then uh, I'll address those questions in my report. So that's about the 15, first 15, 20 minutes of, of the meeting. Next, there's about an hour and a half of cognitive testing. Um, again, I, I assess all the major areas of cognition. You, you'll get an IQ test. You'll get lots of measures of attention. I'll also assess your memory, language, and, and all the major areas of cognitive functioning. That'll take about an hour and 15 minutes. Most of that is uh, done face-to-face -face where we're working on these tests together. 
although uh, there is one 15 minute test that's done on the computer. After that, we'll take a, a brief break. And uh, by the end of that break, I'll have all of that cognitive testing scored going into the interview. So I will have lots of information to go off of in the interview. It gives me an idea of what sorts of problems you're having. The interview is mostly focused on getting that course of your mental health and cognitive problems, getting the story of how this, these things have progressed, uh, how these issues have progressed throughout your life. And then that takes about 45 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes. And then at the end of the appointment, after about two and a half or three hours total uh, of appointment time, I'll let you know what I'm thinking um, in terms of your diagnosis, your treatment, uh, recommendations, my answers to your questions. I'm going to let you know that day uh, my preliminary feedback. And you'll have the opportunity to have a little back and forth about that feedback, uh, and I'll get your opinion on it as well. Within three business days, I'll write up a report. I'll send you that report by email, and you'll be able to read that, that full official report. About uh, three to five days after that, we'll have a feedback session that, that will be an online session uh, via telehealth. It'll be 15 to 20 minutes, uh, 15 to 30 minutes, depending on how much we, want, we need to cover. And I review the report, answer any questions you have about the report, and uh, discuss my treatment recommendations with you. So that's uh, the entire process. Uh, the idea is that by the end of this process, you'll know what's causing your attention problems or any other mental health problems that you're having. You'll have a comprehensive report that meets the best practices for doing a mental health assessment. And you'll know exactly what you need to do in order to overcome your problems in terms of uh, the next stages of treatment. And you'll have this thorough report to bring to treatment providers, to submit for academic accommodations, to bring to medication providers, to let them know exactly what needs to be done to get you where you need to be. So the cost of that whole process, $50, and that fee is due at the beginning of the in-person appointment. I don't take insurance because um, if I were to do insurance, if I did accept insurance, I wouldn't be able to do the quality of work that um, I feel is appropriate. Um, so for that reason, I, I don't accept insurance. I do accept credit cards and cash. And I also have a payment program called Care Credit that people can apply for uh, prior to the appointment. And that can be used to spread out the payments over six months with uh, no interest if the full balance is paid in full at, within six months. So that's the general process uh, for the assessments and in general what I recommend for, for an adult ADHD assessment for you. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. My email is anthony at clevelandtesting.com. You can also call me by phone. Happy to answer any questions you have, even if you don't plan on doing an assessment uh, with me. Um, hopefully you do do an assessment with me uh, because uh, it is a comprehensive assessment. My wait list is typically less than one week, so you get you in really quickly, and it will set you up on the right path uh, towards overcoming your problems. So once again, I'm, I'm Dr. Tara Scavage of Cleveland Psychological Testing. If you have any questions, please do feel free to reach out. Uh, thank you, and have a wonderful day.